hundreds join pro Palestinians march in Ghana. So we know our people. We love having an affinity and a covenant with the with the heathen. So with things going on in uh in 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 Gaza, it looks like our people in Ghana have to pick a side. Let's see what side they, what side they picked. Read that. I mean, play that. All right. So look. Because while IT get they self together, this is what I need y'all to do. Because I know y'all ain't done it yet. Stop what you're doing. Push the like button real quick. I right, hit the like button. You can hit it. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. It's not, you know, because we want likes. It's because we want the algorithm to give us steam so people can just hop on the app. And because this live streaming thing is getting so many likes, here, maybe you want to watch it. You understand? So it's about pushing a message. So help us push the message by doing a simple pushing of the like button. Message! You understand? If you like the truth, yeah, you genuinely like it. So why not push the button that would tell us that you like it? Right. All right? All right. Play it. Come on. Hundreds of Ghanaians took to the streets of the capital Accra on Thursday to demand a ceasefire in Gaza. Protesters gathered at a main interchange named after the country's first president and independence icon, Kwame Nkrumah. And among them, his daughter, Samia. This must stop. We cannot sit back and see children being killed. Women and children, innocent civilians, irrespective of where they come from, what their religion is, what their race is. The protest took place as violence focused on the Gaza Strip has been intensifying. That's after Hamas militants broke through the border into Israel on October 7th and went on a rampage. Israel says 1,400 people were killed, mostly civilians, and more than 200 taken hostage. Gaza health authorities say at least 9,601 people, more than a third of them children, have died in Israel's ensuing bombardment of the densely populated Palestinian enclave. We Ghanaians, we are not in support of killing babies and children, old people, and I don't know. All right. Ghana's president, Nana Aku. All right, all right. So y'all get the gist of it, right? Basically, the people in Ghana are picking a side based on what's happening so they're closer to it they know what it is it's not media can't push the propaganda to make you think that the israelis are the victims it's clearly to see who's on the the oppressing side and the oppressed side in that equation the issue is right dealing with ghana is there is a um what's this called like a cognitive dissonance or whatever the case we forget the history concerning the Palestinians Message. and what they did to our people. That's why a lot of our people in Africa before the recent, and when I say recent, over the past couple of hundred years, the recent mass colonization of that continent, prior to that, majority of Africans were worshiping Allah by way of the administration of the damn uh, Islam with the sword in one hand, Quran in the other hand, by force. You understand? They were forcefully converted and through slavery of the Arabs. Message. You understand? The Palestinians took their part in that thing. It is what it is. So they're not innocent. But you know how our people get down. It's you, you going through what I'm going through, so we're going to pick your side. Listen, it ain't no side to pick. We on God's side. Exactly. You understand? Now get Isaiah chapter 8. What you going to say, Ops? They don't even realize in Ghana, y'all, y'all, they picking the side of the Palestinians. Like you said, they took that land from you first. So instead of the Ghanaians looking at it like, they fighting over a land that don't belong to either one of them. That's our land. How'd you get to Ghana? How'd you get to the West Coast of Africa? Right. Because your land was ransacked. But like you, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, the slight of the hand. They've been completely deceived to thinking that, Oh, the Palestinians, they're okay. The Israelis are bad. No, none of them are for you. Y'all supposed to be wanting that land back, not fighting for them to get it back. Exactly. Fuck the hell out. Isaiah chapter 8, this is the message to my brothers and sisters in Ghana and all throughout the continent of Africa. I know you want to pick a side, but check out what God said. Read that. Isaiah book, 8 verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9. Read it out. Associate yourselves, O ye people. 
and ye shall be broken in pieces. God says if you associate yourselves with them, you're going to be broken in pieces. Now, this is the interesting thing, right? We know that the so-called white man over there the par parading, masquerading themselves as Israel, right? They are the synagogue of Satan, per Jesus Christ. The Revelation devil. 2 and 9, it's red letters. It is what it is. Do we got to read it? Okay, so look, we ain't got to read it. Do, do we got to read it? Let's just read it. Let's, Let's just read, read it. it. <laughs> the hell, let's, let's just Girl. read it. All right? Our people can't hear this enough. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works in tribulation God and poverty. God know your works, tribulation, and poverty. Who is he talking to? The real Jews. And at that time, Smyrna, right? That's Just like right. We got real Jews in Jamaica. We got real Jews in Haiti. We got real Jews in Brooklyn. We got real Jews in Ghana. You understand? God was sending this, sending this message to the Jews that were repenting and following him. He said, I know your works are tribulation and poverty because the Jews, because of Bible prophecy, that would be their plight leading up to their salvation. They will be going through tribulation. They will be going through poverty. You understand? Go ahead. But thou art rich. But you're really rich because you're the chosen. Message. <laughs> you are the one that's going to inherit the heaven and earth as your possession, as joint heirs with Christ. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. At that time, there was the Amalekites, the descendants of Herod. They were masquerading themselves as Israelites because they were circumcised and converted and observing the religion. You understand? But they were not of the bloodline. They were not descendants of Judah. Those people had descendants. Those descendants are the people that you see today doing the exact same thing. Why? It's no new thing under the sun. Those people at that time, it's the same generation back today. They doing the same thing because they observe the customs, even though in their books and their documentation, they, we have no true, nothing tracing us back to the true Israelites. We trace back to a nation of converts, the Khazars. You understand? The Edomites of the stock of Amalek. They know this is in their books, and it's supported and backed up by the Holy Scriptures. God said, Christ is saying here, the fact that they call themselves Jews, which means you're from the tribe of Judah, is blasphemy. I said that I hate you. It's Malachi chapter 1, verse 2, Romans 9, verse 13. I hate you. You understand? You're, <laughs> hey, there's going to be not any more remaining of you. Obadiah, verse 18. You understand? There's no repentance for you. Hebrews 12, 16, and 17. All of this, but yet you rob my people of their land and their identity, and you call yourself a Jew, and you got the world following behind that. That is blasphemy. That's right. Christ said, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Go ahead. And are not. But they not the real Jews. They just not. It is what it is. Amalek. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. So Christ gives you the proper way to identify them. You understand? He gives you their true identity here. They say that they're Jews, but they're actually the synagogue of Satan. That's what you call them. That's what you, if you're spiritual, he that hath an ear, let him hear. The you understand? Devil. So when we say, and we're not coming from no Muslim, Nation of Islam, Farrakhan, fight the power perspective at all. You understand? When I was a Christian, I didn't know that Jesus Christ called a race of people Satan. Right. right. But now I know. You understand? So oh, that's what I'm going to call it. And that's what you should too. Don't call them a Jew because they not. Call them the synagogue of Satan. Emily. Damn. Now, just in case you're confused, well, I don't know. I still think that's the dude that was boxing with God and got and fell down to the earth. Read the next verse. Verse 10. Come on. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Uh -huh. Behold, the devil. So he's talking to the real Jews. You're going to suffer, right? And what's the things he's going to suffer? Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So, wait a minute. So is it a, a a red mythical creature with two horns and a pitchfork throwing niggas in jail? Hell no. Hell no. 
Who throwing niggas? Who locked up Peter in Acts 12? You understand? Them who said he was a Jew and was not. That was an Edomite, Herod, Agrippa. You understand? That's who was throwing the real Jews in jail for what they believed. His Message is repeating itself. You understand? So again, Christ is telling you a race of people is the devil, Satan. You understand? So of course, anybody with any sense would be against Satan. I'm not picking Satan's side, right? But here's the thing. Go to Joel chapter 3. God has a judgment written for every last nation in the planet that has done any wrong to God's people. You understand? And guess what? Palestine. And guess what? Satan can be used and will be used and has been used and is being used by God as an instrument of punishment on those That's who That's right. That's another level of understanding. All right? Now watch this. Read that. The book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 1. Verse 4. Verse 4. Come on. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Uh huh. In all the coast of Palestine. In all the coast of who? Of Palestine. So God has an issue with Palestine, with the Palestinians. What's the issue? Go ahead. Will ye render me a recompense? Uh huh. And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, well, I will turn your recompense upon your own head. God says, I'm going to return a recompense upon your head, meaning he has a judgment lined up for them. For what? Go ahead. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold. They invaded the temple. Go ahead. And have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Damn. The children also of Judah. The real Jews. Us, read. And the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. You sold the true children of God to the white man. That's do your homework. That's the trans-Saharan or sub-Saharan slave trade. You understand? And they have been taking part in slave trades all the way to the day. Like with the boxer name. Uh, what's the dude what's name? The, uh, to this day. <laughs> to this damn day. <laughs> and do your homework. Deontay Libya, Wilder. Deontay Wilder. <laughs> Libya, you know, they still selling niggas. They still selling the real Jews in slavery. God has an issue with that. Go ahead. That she might remove them far from their border. Watch this. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. So I'm going to return your recompense upon your head. Go ahead. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. So what is God saying? God is saying that the same thing that they've done to us, they're going to receive. There is a judgment all allotted for the Palestinians. That's right. So when you see them going through things like their children being bombed and massacred, and so on and so forth. I know it sounds harsh, but that's God's judgment for them, recompense for what they did to you. You understand what they did to his chosen people. So you associating yourself with them, taking up for them, defending them, that's saying that you have a problem with God's judgment for them. Bug so the hell you to out. fall the hell back. Go back to Isaiah chapter 8 and finish that verse, verse 9. It is what it is. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 9. Bring it out. Associate yourselves, O ye people, uh -huh. and ye shall be broken in pieces. Read. And give ear, all ye of far countries. You brothers and sisters in Ghana. Bring it out. Read. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Right. You trying to gird yourselves up for them, trying to stand up for them, you're going to be broken in pieces. Read. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Right. So... If we don't want to be broken in pieces for associating ourselves with those who are getting what was coming for them, we're going to be broken in pieces along with them. You understand? So, brothers and sisters, fall back. You going through, you got tribulation and poverty that you're dealing with. The true solution, the thing that you need to be worried about is repentance. You understand? So God can give you what's coming for you and that stay in your lane redemption you understand from all of these nations from the palestinians from the arabs from the chinese from the damn the white man you understand that's all the hell we need to be focused on all right ain't no sides to be picked in this situation pick 
God's side. What do God want you to do? Repent. That's all right. right. 